little while ago I posted this video where I was demonstrating a latching power circuit. If you haven't seen the video, check in my description below and I will put a link in there for you. But basically what I was demonstrating was this circuit here, which is a basic latching power circuit. So from a single push button, you press once, turn the power on to drive your output device, press again, it will turn off. Now I had a comment from uh, somebody that goes by the name of Bursek Viking, I hope I pronounced that right. And what, what they said was, I think you should have a resistor in series with the push button. As the circuit is now, you are connecting a 22 microfarad capacitor charged to 9 volts directly over the base emitter junction of the transistor, just a matter of time before it fails. So what they're saying is when your supply voltage here, which I add at 9 volts in my demonstration, that charges this capacitor up through this resistor to that, to that supply voltage or 9 volts. Then when I press the power switch here, effectively you're discharging all of that energy from the capacitor through the switch and into the base of this transistor, which goes through the emitter to ground. So that's your base emitter junction there. So you're discharging 9 volts directly through that base emitter. So what they're saying is eventually that will damage that transistor. Actually, when you look at it, the capacitor is also discharging through this transistor. So they're both getting whacked by that full 9 volt supply. So I thought I'll put that to the test. So let's have a look. Right, so I've got the board reset up. This is the original momentary push button switch that I had. And all I've done is I've wired this timer relay device in line with that, or sorry, across that. So it's effectively simulating the same thing as sitting there pressing the button. I wasn't gonna sit there for hours on end. Um, so this is clicking away every one second, which means you're pressing once to turn it on and then again to turn it off. So this LED is going on every two seconds and off every two seconds. That's when it's going to the off state that you're discharging that capacitor through the transistors. Okay, so then I've wired the supply to this LED into my signal generator. Now the signal generator actually has an external input and has a counter function which I've got ticking away here. Let me just move the camera up closer and you can see how many iterations it's been through. Right, there you go. You can just see there on the counter. Sorry, I'm hand holding the camera. That's the counter there. And it's currently at 27,283, 284. Yeah, it's every other click, obviously, that it will go in the off state, 285, and so on. So that's quite a few iterations. I've had this going now a day and a half or something to get to that. So um, is it a good test? Well, actually it's not, and I'll explain why. So I have my scope probe connected to this point here. It's on the positive side of this capacitor. And as you can see, that capacitor is charged by quite a large resistor. So our supply voltage was coming in through this 660K ohm resistor. So you gotta take into account the charge time of this capacitor. So if you know about RC time constants, let's just have a quick look at it. The, we've got a 660K resistor and a 22 microfarad capacitor. And there's this thing called tau, which is a single time constant. So you take the resistance and times it by the capacitance. So 660K is 660,000 and 22 microfarads is that. It's 0 0.000022. Or you can look at it like that. So tell is 14.52 seconds. So it takes 14.52 seconds to charge up to 63% of the supply voltage. So that equates to 5 point, just 5.67 volts. Now, I was only having the circuit in the on state or the off state for one second at a time. So I, I was not even achieving 5.67 volts. And in order to get to your supply voltage, the general rule of thumb is that you multiply your tal, your time constant, by five. 
So that equates to 72.6 seconds. So I'd have to do each of those iterations, wait 72.6 seconds, then turn it on, then wait another something, then turn it off, and then wait another. So in order to get up to that number of iterations again, it would take forever. So I am going to do a different circuit purely to test the impact on that transistor. And just to prove that, I've got my scope same board, scape probe wired into the positive side of that capacitor and then if we look at the scape, let's have a look at the results. Right, there you go. So there's the charging trace of the capacitor you can see, comes up and then drops off when we discharge and I'm currently at one volt per division and as you can see we're not even getting up to one volt here so that's not a real test. We're going to have to come up with uh, an alternative. Right, I think this circuit will do it. So I've just got rid of some of the clutter and this is a fair representation of what it is we're trying to test. I've replaced the push button switch with my timer relay there and I've replaced that 660K ohm resistor with a 1K resistor. So that results in a charge time of just over half a second. So that gives us plenty of time with our one second push button. Um, so let's put it to the test. And there you go, you can see now the rise time is much quicker. We haven't got that long drawn out curve. And I've now got five volts per division, so we are just coming up to nine volts there. If I just speed up the scope for a second, you see the curve a bit better. Okay, much better. All right, we'll leave that ticking away to get to over sort of 20,000 iterations and we'll see what happens. Right, I've got the new circuit running down here, as you can see. This is the uh, 100K resistor over this side and the 1K resistor here. And I've got my two transistors lined up there. The relay is still clicking away, turning it on and off, on and off, on and off. Uh, same, same delay, one second. And if we look at the counter now, I've left this running quite a bit longer, actually. Um, so let's just get that focused. There you go. It's over 42,000 iterations now. And if we look at the scope, just to check it is still oscillating correctly. There you go. Charging up to the nine volts still and obviously discharging it fairly dramatically as we saw. All right, so that's that's gone on for some considerable time and appears to be working okay, but let's check that. Okay, got my trusty cheap component tester. Uh, it's all I've got, unfortunately, um, but let's just give it a go. So I'm gonna take out the first transistor and put that in there, make sure that I'm going in the right legs. Uh, no, that's no good. Hold on a second. Right, I've just bent the legs a bit to get it in the, in the right pins there. Uh, so let's click the test button and see what she says. Uh, there you go, it's detected it as a transistor, so it, that alone suggests to me that it's working okay. We got uh, the pins detected as emitter-based collector. It's got an HS, HFE of 277. Okay, so that one looks okay, we'll try the second one. Right, once again, I've had to reshape the legs to get it in the right pins, and let's do a test on that one. And again, detected it as a NPN transistor. It's emitter-based collector on those three pins, and it's got a HFE of 277. Um, so they look, they look okay to me. So I don't think the discharging of that 22 microfarad capacitor has actually caused any damage at all to those. And uh, my take on that is that a 22 microfarad capacitor doesn't actually have the energy to cause harm to these transistors and given you're discharging it across both of course you're taking half the load e either side um, so i don't know Le leave your comments if you think otherwise so let's just have a look at what this full time is is it actually instantaneously discharging or is it over some period of time i expect it is because there'd be some inherent resistance through that transistor and the rest of the circuitry so it wouldn't, it wouldn't absolutely discharge in zero time scale because that would be infinite current. So let's just do, let's just speed this up and check my trigger, which is on the falling edge. And we are just about halfway there. Okay, 
So if I do a speed up some more, we do a single shot. There we go, we captured one. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So what we got appears to be switch bounce. So the relay and indeed the push button switch probably is incurring switch bounce here and maybe a rare instance where switch bounce is actually a, a beneficial thing because it's it's drawing out the discharge of that capacitor in some respect or maybe not uh, leave a comment in below if you've got any thoughts on that but let's just look at the total time it takes to discharge so if i put my cursor on and leave that to where it initiates and it tails off looks to be about there. So what have we got? We've got 194 microseconds it's taking to fully discharge that capacitor, albeit we've got this bouncing in between. I'm assuming that switch bounce, maybe some other thing going on with the with the tra two transistors. I don't think so. Pretty certain that switch bounce, but if you've got any ideas, leave a comment. So yeah, that's that's what we're getting. Okay, a big thanks to everybody who did comment on against that video. It helps others to fully understand what was being presented. Um, please click the like and subscribe button if you found this useful. And a big thanks to everybody who already has subscribed. My, my numbers are fast approaching the 1,000 target I'm after. So if you found this useful and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Catch you later.